I'm Stephen Dunifer, uh, founder of Free Radio Berkeley. I want to give you a little bit of an overview and history of the project that's now been going for approximately on the order of 15 or 16 years. Free Radio Berkeley, from the very beginning, has been about two things. One, uh, the right of individuals and communities to broadcast and providing the technology and skills uh, to folks so they could do that. With our first broadcast beginning in April 1993 and continuing on till 1998, Free Radio Berkeley was an alternative community voice uh, covering uh, Berkeley, Oakland area here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Barnaby Wild, and I'm here today in the National Corporate Radio studio with a special guest, Captain Hook, poster boy for the rapidly growing micropower radio movement known to many as Pirate Radio. Ahoy there, Captain, and welcome to the studio. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. We're opening up our phone lines so our listeners can have a chance to ask their own questions of the old skull and crossbone pirate broadcaster purported to be the terror of the Federal Communications Commission. For Radio Berkeley had its beginnings uh, first off with myself as I guess the prime prime mover uh, initially. In 1992 I had uh, made contact with attorneys from the National Lawyers Guild Committee on Democratic Communications who had uh, written a sample brief to support another person whom we consider pretty much the uh, a progenitor of the, of the term micropower broadcasting, that is Mabana Kotako, who started broadcasting a few years before out of a housing project in Springfield, Illinois. And there were other examples of similar endeavors that basically provided the encouragement and inspiration for uh, what became Free Radio Berkeley. You know, based on the legal arguments that were contained within this legal brief and just the somewhat compelling social political environment that we found ourselves in at that time, I felt that setting up a small radio station to challenge the regulatory structures and to be a free voice, to be a way the community could express itself, uh, was going to be a very important thing to bring about. And as an electronic engineer, I was able to design some initially some small transmitters. Actually, one of the first small ones was used at a rainbow summer gathering in 1992. And later on, uh, some of these small transmitters were incorporated as a part of a, a protest outside the uh, radio station KPFA in Berkeley because of issues that were occurring internally there. Set your radio free, and the uh, chorus is very, very easy to sing. It goes like this. <clears throat> Goes. Set your radio free, yeah. Screw the FCC, yeah. Get your radio, set your radio free. Can you try that? Set your radio free, yeah. Screw the FCC, yeah. Get your radio, set your radio free. But officially, Free Radio Berkeley went on the air April 11th in 1993. It's for first broadcast. Of course, it came to the attention of the FCC very, uh, fairly quickly, and we were notified by the FCC that they were uh, seeking to try to find myself for this operation in June, May or June of that year. And however, we had somewhat, I would say, created a legal bear trap that they stepped into, and. We've always, uh, and myself particularly, have, have seen this as a movement of electronic civil disobedience. Uh, that is, uh, people taking the technology needed to put a station on the air and going on the air uh, to challenge what uh, I and others consider to be unconstitutionally constructed regulations and, uh, and laws that prohibit uh, people from having a voice. We received our first court victory at the first hearing in January of 95, where a federal judge, Claudia Wilkin, ruled against the FCC 
and said there were constitutional issues uh, that had to be determined. At that point, uh, Freer of Berkeley came out of the protection of the court system and one way or the other people saw this as a green light you know, to go on the air with their own stations. And we remained under the protection of the court for the next uh, approximately four years. Within six weeks of the court ruling in our favor, uh, Freer of Berkeley became a 24-7 uh, community radio station. Free Radio Berkeley and San Francisco Liberation Radio have been on the air continuously for weeks in San Francisco and Berkeley. What does the public think of these fledgling micropower stations? Are they meeting the community's needs? For an answer, we asked people on the street to tell us what they think of Free Radio. Well, I just don't think there's enough coverage of the O.J. Simpson trial. I need those details about Prosecutor Marsha Clark's wardrobe, or I can't hold my own around the water cooler. I've been listening, and I like the music and all, but I'm just not hearing enough about Tanya Harding. Those free radio people need to dig deeper and get the real story out to the public about her costumes. I mean, they're so tacky. How about you, sir? Lady, it sucks. Also, at the same time, uh, it was realized that not only was the broadcasting important, but empowering people with the skills, knowledge, tools, equipment, and so forth were equally important. So from the very beginning, uh, workshops uh, were given, teaching people about how to set up their own small stations, how to build transmitters. Uh, we've been um, working not only in the United States, but other countries as well. Uh, from that time, very early on, uh, due to the publicity that was um, generated from our efforts, efforts of other people doing the broadcast as the movement grew, as we engaged with the FCC in an ongoing legal battle that lasted for four years, uh, other people came to us from other countries uh, inquiring about how they could do this as well. So we helped set up small stations uh, with people in Mexico and uh, other countries around the world. Uh, transmitters were sent to the Zapatistas who uh, rose up in 94 out of the uh, Lacadon jungles in Mexico and we've been working uh, with other liberation struggles, for example, in Haiti, uh, in East Timor, uh, anywhere people want to have a voice and are looking to obtain the materials, the equipment, uh, training, and so forth, we've been uh, more than uh, happy to provide this to them. Los hombres y mujeres luchamos porque haya respeto en nuestras vidas y en la comunidad. Por eso respetamos y trabajamos juntos ocupando los cargos donde hay necesidad. Por eso compañeros, por eso compañeras, uno con la igualdad habrá vida. Uh, in that context, uh, Free Radio Berkeley offers radio camps uh, primarily during the summer month on holiday weekends where people can come and learn how to build under instruction their own, own broadcast transmitters. Uh, we also offer uh, a volunteer apprentice program where uh, an individual uh, may come here to work with us in our shop. We'll teach them basic electronics how to set up stations, how to fabricate and build equipment, and you know, gain you know, really valuable hands-on experience in, in various areas of electronics and fabrication and, and so forth. Uh, hands-on education is very vital to um, really understanding how the world works and being uh, an engaged part of the world. So I invite uh, people who wish to you know, gain experience uh, in these areas to come and work with us, either come to our radio camps or take part in our volunteer apprentice program or get involved in other ways that uh, they can help uh, support the ongoing program here. We're 
here in the Twin Towers of the Oakland Superior Court Building on Friday, January 20th, 1995, where the Federal Communications Commission is seeking an injunction against Free Radio Berkeley to stop its micropower broadcasts. Let's listen in. Be seated and come to order. The court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Claudia Wilkin presiding. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. We're here on the matter of the United States versus Stephen Benefer. In the course of this um, adventure, which has uh, been a lot of fun and has had a lot of interesting and very ironic moments uh, contained within it, uh, we've produced uh, a lot of documentation. We have uh, uh, my, <clears throat> my good friend uh, Ron Sokolsky and I edited a book called Seizing the Airwaves, uh, which gives uh, a bit of the sort of uh, political, social uh, history and context of the free radio movement in the 1990s. And I'm looking to do sort of a sequel to this book on a history of the free radio movement. It'll be entitled uh, uh, Kiss My Bill of Rights, A Personal Saga of the Free Radio Movement. Uh, we've also produced some videos and other, other works. Uh, these are all uh, available and detailed on our, on our websites. And basically, the underlying philosophy of all of this is that the airwaves belong to the people. They are a common resource that belongs to everyone and should not be used for the exclusive profit uh, by corporations and used to control people's uh, minds, control their actions, basically through massive propaganda uh, that is employed currently on the airwaves. Free radio is a way to break through that to break the stranglehold of the corporate broadcast media industrial complex, whatever you want to call it, break their stranglehold on the free flow of news, information, ideas, cultural and artistic expression, and basically return the airwaves uh, to whom they really belong. That is the people uh, on this planet that deserve to have a voice and have a right to have a voice. And that's what this free radio movement is all about. Was a time I'll always remember I could never forget How reality came down around us Like some western movie set When the dust all settled The sun shone so bright And a great calm took over us Like it was